the formidable robot. Have you ever heard of the fandom user named Marco Orzo? He was a former creepypasta writer who made five stories, four were lost episodes and one was a game-related pasta, active on GLC is lost episode with the around 2019 to 2020, back when the website still uploads seemingly awful stories, and then the spin pasta with the in 2022. Most of his stories had the usual tropes you've seen in old shitty creepypastas, but his two last stories are much more messed up than you can think of. Marco was known to be one of the most hated and heavily criticized creepypasta users, who went from being an original storyteller to a sadistic and lord trying to scare the bejesus out of readers, only to be greeted with backlash that made him disappear from the internet entirely. I might list the stories he has made. Dead Foley, created April 29, 2019. From what I could remember, it was an obvious reskin of a popular Simpsons creepypasta by the name of Dead Bart, except it features fully from the Disney Junior series The Line Guard. It was about a lost episode of the show where Foley accidentally falls off a cliff and ends up dying, until it shows a photorealistic drawing of her mangled bloodied body. The episode ends with Kain, Beshi, Ono and Bang by mourning over the loss of the poor cheetah, until it cuts to the show's credits on a silent black background. Dead Foley is one of the most ranted and highly low-rated stories on the lost episode with it, and some claimed it was a blatant rip-off of Dead Bart but with line guard characters, while others claimed it's even worse than the original story. SpongeBob's Worst Birthday, created September 18, 2019. It's about a lost episode of SpongeBob SquarePants that was burned onto a DVD and found at Goodwill. It had all the typical tropes you could expect. SpongeBob wants his friends to join his birthday party, but they declined it and told him to fuck off. At that point, SpongeBob snaps and began a killing spree in Bikini Bottom, murdering everyone in fucked up ways imaginable, with references to blood and gore and even hyperrealism added into the mix. The story ends with the viewer tearing the disc apart with their bare hands and tells the reader to not watch the episode if they come across it. Unlike the previous story, it was harshly criticized for its poor grammar and storytelling, thus shaming Marco for making this story, but he decided to shrug it off and made one last story on the wiki almost a year later. Mario's Murder, created May 21, 2020. This was Marco's last story on the Lost Episode Wiki and first video game related creepypasta, and it's about an unsettling Super Mario World SNES hack. I'll give you a lengthy description of what the story is about. Unlike most gaming pastas, it starts with the protagonist Quincy Joseph receiving an unknown email of a Super Mario World ROM that is seemingly hacked. Quincy then downloaded the ROM and opened it on his SNES emulator, but he suddenly noticed that he got to play as Luigi instead of Mario. Meanwhile, Quincy played the game as normal with minor changes, like the sky background being night and the music being dull for example, until he comes across a small red pipe in place of the giant gate at the end of Yoshi's Island 2. Once he makes Luigi enter the pipe, he drifts to an endless black void, only to come across the bloody dead body of Mario. As Luigi stood there with Mario's corpse, an evil version of Mario appeared in front of them, with bloody dark colored clothing and black eyes with white pupils, along with the low-pitched version of the Kefka laugh from Sonic.exe. After the evil Mario appeared, Luigi was transported into a level that depicted hell, along with realistic sounds of fire and the screams from Blood Baron. Blood and gore were strewn around the place as Quincy playing as Luigi wandered the underworld level for a few minutes, until the evil Mario appeared behind him and started chasing him, with the chase scene being similar to Sonic.exe. During this, the Super Mario 64 Endless Stairs theme played in the SMW sound font, once the demonic Mario reaches Luigi, the screen snaps to black as it plays a distorted version of the deranged woman scream sound effect. As the scream stopped, the screen flickered to static and showed a hyper-realistic image of Mario with the same dark clothing and black eyes with white pupils, along with bloodied text on top of him saying, I am the real Mario. 
while the image was displayed, it played the slowed down and even more distorted version of the Kafka laugh, which caused Quincy to take off his headphones in terror, until his computer displayed a blood red version of the blue screen of death. Quincy's computer permanently dies after that, and the story ends with Quincy getting killed by a Mario plush, which looks like the evil Mario from the supposed SMW ROM hack. Ever since the story was published to the wiki, a shitload of comments flooded, some praised it as well made and inspiring, while others ranted that it was just as bad as his first two stories. They said it was a rancid rip-off of both I Hate You and Sonic.exe combined, but with grammar and cliches that are just as bad as the latter. But don't get me wrong, this story's pretty good and ironic. Harassment and mockery started to spread towards Marco Orzo on the Lost Episode Wiki. As of late 2020, trolls decided to heavily vandalize Marco's first three stories with insanely inappropriate changes and content, thus resulting in his ruined stories getting instantly deleted by site's moderators, along with blocking Marco from the site permanently. He didn't even try to appeal that there had been an error, and due to the wiki's bullshit moderation at the time, he left the site for good. After that, Marco stopped writing creepypastas for a year until early 2022, when he went over to the Spin Pasta Wiki, which was now flooded with irrelevant and trope-worthy lost episode creepypastas such as THX trailers, crossovers, copycats, etc. He re-uploaded his first three and vandalized stories to the wiki, and he decided to make more until late 2022. His two new stories were explicitly different from the three stories he had made from 2019 to 2020, possibly taking payback on the people who ridiculed him in the creepypasta community. Arthur Gets Kidnapped, created March 15, 2022. This is Marco's first attempt at making an edgy, lost episode creepypasta on Spin Pasta, centering around the animated PBS Kids series Arthur. I'll describe the story without going into unnecessary details. The pasta follows a guy buying a VHS with four random Arthur episodes at some shady thrift store and goes home to watch it on his TV VCR combo. The tape played three normal episodes of Arthur, until it got to the fourth and last episode which badly affected the protagonist. As the lost episode played as normal, Arthur stumbles upon a sketchy looking ice cream truck, playing an unsettling jingle. A man who resembled a bear walks over to Arthur, who asks for a strawberry-flavored ice cream with a waffle cone. In response, the man would put Arthur in his van and drive off, while Arthur's parents and siblings watched in horror, trying to think of a solution to get him back home to safety. Meanwhile, Arthur was taken to the basement of the man's house, chained up on a wall. The man comes up to the poor Ardvark and tortures him in ways I won't write down, as it is very graphic and suggestive, and it's something that is etched into the readers' heads to this day. So yeah, the episode ends with Arthur dying a slow and painful death. Just like in any lost episode pasta, the protagonist ejects the videotape and throws it into an active furnace, burning it into ashes. In conclusion of the pasta, the person told the reader not to find and watch the episode, as readers viewed this story, they were appalled. They began backlashing Marco, calling him out for child endangerment, and any other fucked up allegation I could think of. Marco didn't give a shit at this point, and eight months later, he decided to make his final story on Spin Pasta, even more disturbing and tasteless than the last. Sonic DVD, created November 23rd, 2022. This was Marco's last ever story on the Spin Pasta Wiki before he was booted off the internet entirely. It's a blatant copycat of the most shocking My Little Pony creepypasta called Goodwill DVD, but features the anime series Sonic X. Marco said this story is way edgier than the previous story with Arthur, but that didn't help the fact due to its sick storytelling way worse than Goodwill DVD itself. The pasta starts with a similar opening. A man named Chris Orkfeld lives in a small town in Florida and buys a Sonic X DVD at a local Walmart. Yes, he bought the DVD from Walmart instead of Goodwill in this story. Once Chris possessed the Sonic DVD, he went home, put the disc into his laptop, and watched five random normal episodes of Sonic X, until it went to the unaired episode that heavily disturbed readers to this day. 
The episode plays similarly to the NLP pasta, with Sonic the Hedgehog looking at himself in the mirror, only to be greeted with a series of disgusting and heavily suggestive flashbacks I won't mention due to safety reasons. As the flashbacks ended, Sonic started to show signs of anger and began to take form, with his eyes turning into black voids and his pupils turning into glowing red orbs. I know, Sonic.exe was used in this story, but it only gets worse from here as I discuss this lengthy ass story even further. Similarly to those shitty lost episode stories, Sonic goes on a full on murderous rampage. His first victim was Tails the Fox, but oh god was it very appalling. Tails suffered the same sickening fate as Arthur from the previous story, but again, I won't type it down. After Sonic finally killed Tails, he went over to all the other characters in the anime such as Amy Rose, Cream the Rabbit, Jiao Cheese, Knuckles the Echidna, Rouge the Bat, Big the Cat, and surprisingly enough, Sally Acorn and the other characters from Sonic's AM, whom for some reason had a full-on cameo and were done in the Sonic X style. Unlike the blatant tropes used in this story, the deaths of the characters Sonic killed were references to real-life murders and tragedies, specifically devoid of any context whatsoever. As the twisted episode neared its end, the demonic Sonic was seen in a hyper-realistic burning city with the sky being blood-red, screaming, I am God, in an echoing satanic voice, just like the Sonic.exe story. So, the episode ends with a series of disturbing imagery and blood-curdling screams filling up Chris's room, which causes Chris to fall to the ground and get a heart attack, which nearly kills him. Chris then recovered from the hospital with his parents reuniting him. The pasta concludes with a story about a messed up tragedy that involves abuse, bullying, murder, etc., and after that is a quote from the Bible. Like before, comments plagued the creepypasta with even more disgusted and horrified remarks, going so far as to spam vomiting emojis and skull emojis to appease their reactions. One comment stated, Bruh, what the fuck did I just read? This is just a shitty ripoff of MLP Goodwill DVD, but with Sonic.exe added, and this time far worse than the two mentioned stories themselves. Another stated, I can't stand it. This is my Little Pony Goodwill DVD and Sonic.exe combined, and adding references to real-world tragedies and murders doesn't make the pasta scary or edgy, it's just sickening, tasteless, and barely had any context to begin with. This is a lot worse than the previous story you have written about Arthur, shame on you. That was when all hell broke loose on Marco, and a month later would be his last time on the internet. In December 2022, Marco was hatefully criticized and mocked online for his distasteful stories, with people calling all sorts of names about him. His two stories, along with his first three stories re-uploaded from the lost episode wiki, were getting deleted from the spin pasta wiki by site administrators, thus blocking Marco from the wiki entirely. Later on New Year's Eve, Marco's fandom account would be deleted due to a heavy violation of the site's terms of use. Things have changed in 2023. Geoshi's Lost Episode Wiki has been cleaned up and rebranded to just being called the Lost Episode Creepypasta Wiki, only to remove the name of the former site owner who was a predator at the time since 2021. Spinpasta on the other hand still makes crossovers, reskins and cliché worthy Lost Episode and video game pastas to this day, each new one becoming more atrocious than the last. But what about Marco? Well, ever since the allegations back in late 2022, his whereabouts were unknown until the summer of 2023, when there was an MSN news article about a 19-year-old male college student from California, named Marcos Orzontic, whose mangled body was found in a forest not far from his home, believing that a wolf or a bear attacked him. As everyone in the creepypasta community saw this report, they were reminded of Marco Orzo, the author who was hated by the creepypasta fanbase. As I'm writing this, I do have archives of his story saved to my USB drive, but not the two stories containing sensitive and not safe for life content. I'll update this document if I have uploaded his first three pastas to my account. That's all for now.